Hi everyone, I'm Cindy. I'm a stage four cancer survivor. Right now we are driving in the car. We have about a four hour drive up to Issaquah, Washington for one of my treatments. We've been doing this for almost, well let's see, it's been over a year now since last April, April of 2018 making this drive every three weeks. For the first six months, it was intense chemo that I was going up for. Um, right now, I go up in for lab work and for some small treatments just to keep the cancer away. Mike is with me. Hey. He's driving, obviously. <laughs> I'm not driving <laughs> while I'm recording. But we have a pretty long drive. Four hours or so. But it's kind of a pretty drive until we get up into the traffic around around Olympia and Tacoma get up on I-5 and the traffic gets pretty thick that is not as pretty but for right now we're driving on country roads they're kind of nice I could talk to you a little bit about about my cancer diagnosis and the surgeries I've had. I was diagnosed originally with stage 2 colon cancer and had a surgery um, to remove the sigmoid part of my colon and that was supposed to have removed the cancer entirely and they didn't think it was going to come back because usually stage two cancer of that type does not spread unless, unless there's, you know, it's a very rare case. And I guess I'm one of those rare cases because it spread to my liver and the lymph node. Then in this last November, November of 2018, I had another surgery to remove the the affected lymph node and my part of my liver that was affected. Um, I was fairly lucky in that the chemotherapy treatment that I was having shrank my liver tumors to a point where one was basically gone and the other one was so small they only had to remove about 10% of my liver whereas originally they were thinking they might have had have to take about 50% so that was really good I was happy about that so I've been being treated at Swedish Hospital up in Issaquah um, they also have a hospital in downtown Seattle that's where I had my second surgery but my my doctor and my chemotherapy appointments are all at the facility in Issaquah which is a very nice and fairly new facility my doctor is really really nice and friendly and I don't don't mind too much going there because it's it's a very relaxing and calming friendly place the nurses they're all really know what they're doing and and are also super friendly and so it's nice there's a Starbucks in the lobby and they provide snacks so <laughs> if I get hungry I can have a bite to eat 
which sometimes when you're getting a chemotherapy treatment, having something to munch on is actually a good thing um, to prevent nausea and whatnot. Um, the first chemotherapy was pretty intense and the side effects were not super fun. I got neuropathy in my hands and, and in my feet and cold things. I couldn't even drink anything cold or touch anything cold. It's quite painful. And I also got a syndrome in my hands and in my feet that causes them to get red and kind of burnt looking and the skin peels that is caused from the chemotherapy pills that I take called Zalota. I'm still currently taking Zalota on a low dose for maintenance. That's my main chemo maintenance chemotherapy. So the, it doesn't cause too bad a side effects, but there's still some there. I've been lucky that I don't get very nauseous. I didn't even with my intense chemotherapy and the type of chemotherapy I received didn't make me lose my hair altogether. I, I did lose it thinned and you know the shower looked like I was shedding but uh, not. I didn't lose any like big chunks which was nice. was diagnosed with cancer I was age 48 and cancer screening for colon cancer colonoscopies were not being recommended for adults under the age of 50 so it was pretty surprising when I was diagnosed at age 48 They've since changed the colonoscopy screening recommendations to age 45, which is probably a really good idea because they're finding more and more people like me who are diagnosed at under the age of 50. I was originally diagnosed with stage 2 and had surgery, which normally with a stage 2 that surgery would would remove that section of colon and the colon cancer doesn't usually spread there's only like a 2% chance of the cancer spreading when when you uh, have that surgery for a stage 2 but uh, mine did um, as I was one of the lucky 2% people a year and a half later I just discovered through CT scans that I did in fact have lesions on my liver and one lymph node that was affected and had to start chemotherapy at that time and seeing my oncologist to talk about this for the first few times he wasn't really sure how well the chemotherapy was going to work. He wasn't sure if I was going to be eligible for surgery due to the fact that the lymph node was very deep in the abdomen and he wasn't sure that, that a surgeon would want to attempt a surgery like that. So talking with my, my oncologist originally, he set up a plan with six months of intense chemotherapy. He was, wasn't convinced that the chemotherapy would be curative. So when Mike and I went home and looked up on the internet, the chance of survival with the type of, of tumors I had um, was only like a 14% chance of, of five year survival rate which isn't really great. I didn't even tell you about that for a month or two. No, you didn't. 
Yeah, Mike didn't even tell me about that for a month or two. I was afraid um, you would be discouraged. Because I, I was upset about having cancer and he didn't want me to get discouraged. And it was a good thing because I didn't get discouraged. I stayed encouraged and kept up the fight. And the, the chemotherapy was working really well in shrinking, shrinking the, the lesions on my liver to a point where my doctor was able to meet with a team of, of other physicians, surgeons, and other oncologists to discuss my case. And they decided that they could in fact do a surgery um, on on not only the liver but the the lymph node they they originally thought they would have to do two surgeries but it turned out they were able to do it all in one surgery they were only willing to attempt a surgery because they decided that that it was a curable situation and and that i had I had a really good chance of, of being cured at that point. Otherwise, they wouldn't have attempted the surgery. They took into consideration my age and my overall health, which luckily was fairly good, and that I only had the, the two spots where the cancer had spread, and I didn't have any further in my lungs or, or anywhere else. Otherwise, if it would have been three places, they would not have attempted the surgery. So my surgery that I had was, it was about a five hour surgery and I ended up with a 12 inch scar across my abdomen, diagonally across my abdomen. They originally thought they'd have to do two incisions, one, one for the liver and the other for the lymph node, but um, the surgeon was good and he was able to to use only one large incision, which is a little easier to heal up from. I was in the hospital for about four days, then was able to come home and healed up really well. They, we've done a scan in January and found no traces of cancer. I'm still waiting for my next scan, which should, should be any time now and um, I can update when that happens and hopefully the cancer is still gone. This is July, we're heading towards the middle of July so um, this would be really good if, it, if, if it's still gone which I have no doubt that it is. now a little after one o'clock and I'm finished with my infusion <laughs> and getting ready to head home we have another four hour drive home so we should be home around five o'clock 5:30 maybe so we'll probably stop for a bite to eat so yeah we'll get home Probably at 5.30. I had a talk with my doctor today about the redness of my hands. <coughs> this is caused from my chemotherapy. Not very pretty. <laughs> 